Creative Babble. Hey guys, it's Javier and John with Criminal Conduct, and we just wrapped up season four. It's ready. It's awesome. John, you you and I have been talking about this case for years, right? Back to like season one. Yeah, I mean, I got involved in this case back in 2016, uh, and I did a couple episodes on Twisted about it, but it is a case that has been near and dear to my heart for many years, and I just always keep track of it. And it's one that I have been talking to you about and I've wanted to do for criminal conduct for a long time because I just think that it is such a it's a sad case, but it's also a very compelling case. Yeah, I, I first learned about it on your podcast, Twisted. You covered it. I think you did a multi-part episode season. And that's like the one case that has haunted me for a very long time. I mean, you know, it's an intriguing and complex case when when years go by and you're still fascinated because the central question behind this case is so compelling and one that that really needs to be discussed, right? Yeah, it does. And it's one of those things where it kind of melds the true crime community in a way with official investigations. And that's because the mother of the victim and one of her friends, basically, they had been trying to get this case into the legal system for years. So basically, it was a grassroots type of organization just pushing this forward, just like the true crime community wants to be where they don't know the specifics of how to investigate a case, but they want to move it forward. And that's what the mom was trying to do. The family, friends, is they wanted this case to be put in front of a jury. Uh, so they had to do all the things that a lot of people do every day, just you know, doing online sleuthing and investigating and searching, trying to figure out what do things mean? You know, what, what does it mean if someone dies of hypothermia and there's no frostbite? Is that, you know, is that possible? You know, that was something that, that came up in this case and and different factors that if you weren't familiar with, you just you just didn't know how to react to them. And so uh, there's all those components to this case, but also uh, you have a grieving family who just they can't fully grieve because they don't believe they know the truth and what happened to their son. And that is just it's a very tragic, very upsetting thing to to be in, a part of, to see, to feel. And I just felt like we need to get out there and we need to give more exposure to this case. Yeah, we don't want to give anything away, of course, but and we're going to play you the trailer after this episode or at the end of the episode. But I mean, what makes this story fascinating is that John and I are starting the whole series by telling you how it ends. Like the in the first minute, you're going to know how this case ends. And that's what's compelling about it, because this was a case where the victim, Praveen Varghese, you know, is found in the woods, like John said, frozen, or not frozen, actually, just died of hypothermia, but there's some injuries. His mother, Lovely, who, like John described, is relentless. I mean, probably the most relentless person I've ever met. She's, she's determined to bring justice to her son's case. All the odds are against this family. They finally get the case to trial. A jury convicts the man of first degree felony murder. So you think that they got vic like their victory. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the judge overturns the jury's verdict. And we're telling you this within the first minute of the season. And the reason why is because that to me was unheard of that a jury's verdict could be overturned by a judge just like that. Yeah, you know, the first time I actually heard about that was during the O.J. Simpson trial back in the early 90s, <clears throat> and I didn't believe it was actually true. I was like, there was no way that the jury could find him guilty or not guilty, and the judge could just change that. I just didn't believe it was possible. Um, and obviously, that didn't happen in the O.J. Simpson case, but that was the first time I'd heard about it. And uh, it had always lingered in my mind, but I'd not ever experienced it until this case. And uh you know, that it's there for a reason, but it was a shocking turn of events. Yeah. So this whole time you're going to be listening to this story and you're going to be reminded of the fact that this judge overturned the verdict. This case does go to trial. But when you listen to the episodes, it just you'll feel how um, almost impossible it was for lovely uh, Praveen's mother to bring this case to trial, to actually get law enforcement to investigate it, to get the prosecutors 
to prosecute the case. I mean, every single step was just grueling just to get it there. And it took years, right? It almost, this is the ninth anniversary, right? Of Praveen's death. Yeah, we're over nine years now. And and when I got involved in the case and I was working with uh, Lovely and Monica Zukas, who was a radio show host who befriended uh, Lovely through this experience, um, you know, when we were working on it, uh, it was almost a mocking that the officials in this case were doing to Lovely and Monica. Believe it or not, we haven't spoiled a thing. John and I were talking about this earlier that this season reminds us of season one in a way because, you know, when we started season one, it was right. We launched it March 2020, right before the world completely changed. So we were able to, before COVID and, and all that, we were able to actually go down to St. Augustine and do some field recording, talk to people. And, and it, it was great. It was what the show that we wanted to make. And then the world changed and season two and three, we had to do everything remote. We couldn't get out. And so this is season four and we're finally, we're, we get boots on the ground again. We, we were able to go to Southern Illinois where this story takes place. And we actually went during the same time that, that Praveen died at the same time of year. So we were able to experience the same kind of cold weather that that he experienced so it, it was it was great to do a much more in-depth reporting that we have done in the previous two seasons yep absolutely yeah looking forward to everybody listening and giving us their feedback all right john i think we've talked enough i think our listeners are ready to listen to season four well it comes out august 18th that's friday everywhere you get your podcast but if you're itching to listen to it now you can get it on Patreon, which we'll link to in the show notes, and Pretend Plus on Apple Podcasts. So if you subscribe to either of those, you'll get the entire season. You can binge all nine episodes right now, and we will put bonus content. Anything that, that comes up, we'll put it in there. But if, if, you, if not, the season comes out August 18th. It will air weekly, and we'll leave you with one last thing. Let's play the trailer. What do you think, John? Sounds good. A college student was found dead in the woods. This season, we're investigating a possible murder, but this isn't your typical true crime story. In fact, we're gonna start where the story ends. Back in June, a jury found 24-year-old Gage Bethune guilty of first-degree murder in the death of Praveen Varghese. Today, a Jackson County judge threw out the guilty verdict and released Bethune on bond. So An SIU student dies, a suspect is charged and convicted of first-degree felony murder. But instead of facing potentially decades in prison, a judge throws out the jury's verdict and lets the convicted killer go free. I'm Javier Leva. And I'm John Taylor. And this is Criminal Conduct, season four, getting away with murder. Subscribe to Criminal Conduct wherever you get your podcasts. Creative Babble.